Today I'm going to use my load center here to test how much I can pull with Johnny X and with Sparky, our Select Track E25. See which one of them can pull more. I think the results may surprise both of us. I've done this test on a regular 1025R just to give you a heads up. It was about 2100 pounds I was able to get out of this. We'll see what we can do with Johnny X. Let's get started. Now the first time I tried this, I had all the weight I could handle on a heavy hitch back here, as well as a bucket full of rock. So I don't know if I'll be able to do this without all that extra ballast. And the reason is I'm liable to spin the wheels. So the, the test, if done right, I can't spin the wheels at all, okay? Bo, are you going to hop up here while I'm on here? Come on. Come on. Okay, good. Okay, I'm pulling about 1,100 pounds now, and it looks like I'm already spinning. Oh, I'm not in four-wheel drive. Let me put it in four-wheel drive. That should help. Okay, I'm at 1,500 and some pounds now. 1,800, 1,900. And I'm still at idle in low range here, but I can spin the wheels. Okay, I think I'm gonna have to put the three point on and some ballast to keep from spinning the wheels. Alternatively, we may have to do this out in the grass somewhere. I may not be able to get good traction here on the rock. Already interesting, 2111 was the peak and we never got off idle. I have a feeling uh, Johnny X is gonna be able to pull a little bit more than a standard Johnny. We may have to get a standard Johnny out to, to double check those numbers, but I promise you we'll have Sparky out, the select track, so stick around. Okay, we'll see if this makes a difference. Again, four wheel drive, I'm just at idle. We'll see if we can keep it from spinning anyway. What did we show, Christy? The peak was 2362. Okay, and we only got to 2100 last time. So even in these rocks, I, I just want to digress here for a moment. I had a Facebook argument, I guess you would say, with a fellow that has run his tractor for years without any rear ballast. He says, I don't need any. I cleared 10 acres with it. Okay, I don't know what you mean by you don't need it. Are you saying you don't need it because you can somehow get by without it? Well, okay, I agree. But even in this brief demonstration, I've illustrated 10% more pulling power with this rear ballast on, right? Because I spun my wheels at 2100 and now we're at 2300, um, just, just sitting here at idle. So that, that's, that's what I'm saying is that it's not just about safety you get more functionality out of your tractor. And this is an afterthought, quite frankly, the pulling power. The ability to pick up more with your bucket because of rear ballast is, is probably the number one feature. Okay, enough off on that soapbox. Well, I'm gonna go wide open this time, uh, see if I can still keep it from spinning. I'm afraid I may not be able to. Okay, now what do we come up with? 2418. 2418, so we really didn't have a lot more pull at full throttle than what we did at idle, which is interesting. But what that's showing is that the relief valve is, I don't know, working, and that at full throttle, we're not gonna see much more out of it because it's the same relief valve at the same pressure. The only thing we got was that at a little bit higher flow, some fluid would go around the relief valve and give us a little bit more pull. Still, this was more than a stock 1025R. I was getting around 2100 with a stock 1025R. Okay, you've been waiting for it. Let's try Sparky. Christy, you can begin to think about this. I'm gonna need your predictions. Okay. But hang on, because I got something to tell the viewers first, and that is, I always said that you'll, as we learn about things, you'll learn about them, right? So. The balls on the three-point arms, 
are too wide to fit in any of the quick hitches we've got. We tried almost all of them. Yeah, well, we did try all of them. We only have two styles. We have a Harbor Freight and we have a, the oh, Deer yeah. Eye Match. And so the Deer Eye Match is actually narrower than the Harbor Freight, but the Harbor Freight still was, was too narrow to fit these quick hitch balls. Now, if you'll look closely here, it's even worse than that because we can't even put the pins, the little yeah, keys in. Yeah, and you even took a hammer and tried. Yeah, so uh, they are really wide. I, I could not operate like this, it would fall off. I'm thinking for this pull test I can get by. Probably. Don't put your toes under there while I'm pulling. I plan to be over there. Okay, so predictions. Little Johnny X could do 2400 and something. I think I remember you saying that the electric tractor should pull more, should have more pulling power. So I'm going to guess 2732, Bob. Okay. And if I win, what's the prize? Cheeseburger. That's all you ever want. Yeah, but see, that makes it so whether I win or yeah, lose. Yeah, that is good for you. I want a salad. Come on. I better win this one. I really had better win this one. Okay, so I'll put a little more thought into my prediction, but I'll probably be less accurate. <laughs> I was thinking. Okay, okay, okay. This tractor has a gear drive transmission, okay? It, when I used to say about electric motors having, you know, it should have more torque or more torque, right? Well, I thought this tractor would be battery driving electric motors directly to the wheels. Well, that's not how it works. This tractor's got oh. a gear drive transmission. So it's got the battery and then it's got an electric motor that drives the gear drive transmission. Okay. And when you flip the switch from forward to reverse, for example, it turns the entire transmission the other way. So unlike a traditional tractor, which the engine always rotates the same direction and the transmission takes care of forward and reverse, in this tractor, the transmission whichever direction it goes is the, the motor turns the other way. So it, it is a unique, a unique design in that sense. But that electric motor should, I'm guessing, have a good bit of torque. Yeah. And it is a gear drive transmission, so we shouldn't lose as much as the hydrostatic. Right, so there should be more power to the ground. Yeah, I think so. I think so. So is this like the price is right where, you know, you? you know, it's the nearest without going over. Yeah, and you haven't said any number yet. Right, so I could just say 2733. Then it would have to be over that. And it'd have to be over that and I'd win. Okay. If it were under 2732, we'd both, both lose. lose. One dollar! <laughs> I'm gonna guess somewhere around 3250. Okay. Now, I, I'm, I'm basing that on it being a gear drive transmission. I have no idea how powerful that electric motor is, right? I mean, so that's a little bit of a guess. We, right. we, we really don't have a clue how this is going to work. Our load center is valid up to 10,000 pounds. I think it'll... It'll yeah. spin out before 10,000 pounds, yeah. right? So we don't have that much weight here. We have, I think we figured 880 or 890 pounds here. I don't have anything in the loader at present. And I don't think Bullseye is going to want to ride with us for the actual no. uh, test. We do have larger tires, so we should have you know better traction in that sense. But when it comes down to it, it will spin out at its weight, right? I mean, or before. Right. Okay. You said 2732, and I said 3250. Although, if this price is right, I would bid 2733. But 3250 is my number. And the first thing I'm going to do is whine about it. I'm gonna go in low gear, low range, put it in F for forward. And here I go. Chain is tight. And I'm spinning my wheels. I'm in four wheel drive and I'm spinning my wheels. What do we have? I see 33 something or, hey, hit the peak, hit the hold button. So here we go.
3566. Okay, and we're not at the max, okay? We're not at the max because I'm spinning. We're gonna have to find another place where I can get better traction. Or else maybe I can put the bucket on and put a load in the bucket. I lost. I'm, my eyes may not be real good anymore, but I believe I see 3566. Yeah, I started to say that. Yeah, I che had no idea. Cheeseburgers it is, guys, and no salad tonight. <laughs> Most cheeseburger places have a salad or at least lettuce on the burger. Well, you can do that. Yeah. Okay, but we, what are we going to do? we got to find a better place to pull this thing. So maybe, maybe I can try out in the grass, but I'm afraid... I'm afraid we won't do any better. It's pretty wet in the grass. Maybe I could put the bucket on and see if I can get, get a load of rock in it. I don't know if the tires have rim guard in them, actually. I guess I could test that. Interesting. So do you think this would pull our eight foot disc? I don't know. I mean, you couldn't pull it with the stock 1025R. No rim guard. No rim guard. We need rim guard! That would have added some weight. Yeah, on these large tires, the rim guard would have helped a lot. Yeah. Okay, so I really don't know an easy way to get more weight on the rear end of it. But I'll, I'll put stand the, up there. I'll put the bucket on the front and we'll at least pull the front wheels down with a load of rock and see what we can come up with. Okay. Hey! You know I'm a University of Illinois graduate. I gotta try some blue and orange. Oh boy. No, the bucket's bigger. I thought maybe a, I could get a bigger bucket full. Oh, yeah, excuses. And I wanted to see if the uh, skid steer quick attach was truly compatible. I had a little bit of an issue getting the left hand one latched. I'm no SSQA expert, so I don't know why that was. Look how it just keeps rolling. I do have an issue with the rollout. It just continues to roll after I let off the pedal, either forward or reverse, unless I hit the brake. The rollout is long enough that, yeah, I've ran into a rock, ran into my garage door, but one would get used to that and realize they have to touch the brake to get it to stop. Now that's not really true. You don't have to touch the brake to get it to stop. It's just that it rolls further than I'm used to. It's, you know, it might roll two or three feet instead of, you know, six inches that I'm used to on other machines. Okay, so maybe 800 pounds of rock. Low range. I want to make sure I don't go in the same holes or any place that I've used before, so I've moved over to this side of the driveway. Now we still are in the same kind of rock, so I won't have any better traction in that sense. Okay, and you have the hold pressed, right? I think it is. Yeah. Oh, it looks like I'm spinning at about the same time. That didn't really do anything. Well, I've got one other choice. I'm not going to dig too big a hole here before I've got another option. What's the option? Well, this option will be one that I typically wouldn't recommend, and that is I'm going to pull downward on the uh, three-point hitch. Get a little more leverage that way. Whoa. Well, we know that those weights will hit the fender here in that scenario. Okay, here we go. Forward, low range, low gear. Anytime you're pulling with a chain, do not jerk. Okay, I have not got above the 3408 yet. Yeah, 3520. Okay. You're spinning. Yep. And that's really all I can do. Now, let me see. If I go to the rabbit speed still here in low range, and let's see if that, if I can. Yeah, I'm up to 3840 there. Wonder if that's because I've got the holes a little deeper. 
Okay, I'm down to the dirt. I think I better stop. Do you notice that rollout even when it's pulling? Watch this. I'm going to give it the acceleration here. I let off. Now, see how long it kept going forward after I, I let off. Okay, what? Oh my goodness, Christy, what number does it Ooh, read now? 4167. I think what we're seeing there is, is once we get these holes dug, it gets a little bit more traction. Okay, so we're still not done, but we're done for today. Right, okay. You and, mean you mean the tractor's not done with what it, it could pull? Yeah, I mean, we've got to figure out a way to get it stopped spinning. Yeah. I think the best way is for me to eat more cheeseburgers. I don't think so. Oh. We're going to figure out how to get more ballast. I do have another heavy hitch rack that we can put 100 pound weights on. We'll, we'll try that, see what we can come up with in a later episode. We, we've got to figure out how to hold this thing down. Yeah. Uh, and maybe we can find, when it's later in the year, maybe we can get it out in some soil that's not going to, I mean, this is going to, you know, this is loose here. It's not right. going to not going to hold and it down. And right now the grass is wet. But even though we're not done. That's a lot. That's a lot. I, I think someday you should put it on the eight foot disc and. Well, we also need to try uh, Johnny too. We need to try the 2038R and the 3046R and see how those come out. I think that's too much to try to squeeze into one episode True. here. Yeah. But we've got to understand really where we are. I, I, I'm pretty impressed with this. It's just a 25 horsepower tractor. I think we're gonna have a lot more pull than any of the hydrostatic subcompact tractors, certainly, and probably any of the hydrostatic um, large frame 25 horsepower tractors, right? The 3025E, okay. the L2501, the, the Coyote 2610s, those, all, all of those machines that are larger frame, but, uh, but still have 25 horsepower. And that's good for ground engaging attachments? That's right, right. You're gonna be able to pull a box blade fuller. Oh. Dig better. Uh, you're gonna be able to push into a pile better, in theory. Okay. Right, because, I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have guessed that. Uh, this was a little surprising to me. I did have the number 4,000 pounds in the back of my mind, but I guess I hedged a little bit. You had gone so low that I thought that... You didn't guess 4,000 pounds. You're just saying that now. Blah, blah, blah. She called me on it. Yeah. If you really had that in your mind, you just said it earlier. Who, who won? You did, but... <laughs> what do you think, Bo? You want cheeseburger? Thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor, Tractor time, time with Tim. Tim. Dear friends, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that has come on you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in as much as you participate in the sufferings of Christ, so that you may be overjoyed when His glory is revealed. See where that cheeseburger is? Right there. There's no salad there. But just look at me versus you. Ooh, that stings. <laughs>